Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, he woke up in what he thought was the presence of a banshee. So angry, he thought that she wanted to kill him. And it wasn't the only time that he saw her. Years later, he found out he wasn't the only one who saw this mysterious presence. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is. 855-853-4802, our phone number. And if you want to share your real ghost stories with us, we would love to hear them or realghoststoriesonline.com. And if you want to get an ad-free experience of the show, you can get that through Apple Podcasts or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Tony and Todd with you on today's edition of the show. Shall we hear a story about banshees? Let's dig in. Let's go for it. Hi, my name is Andy. Uh, I grew up north of Baltimore. Uh, this is some years ago when I was a teenager. Uh, I used to stay in the basement. That was my room. We had a lot of kids in the family, and there wasn't a lot of space. And uh, <clears throat> I used to have sleepovers with my friends. Sometimes I'd stay at their house. Sometimes I'd stay at my house. You know, we'd watch movies late at night and hang out, play video games, that kind of thing. Anyways, one night, uh, my one friend of mine was over, and we're talking about girls and stuff, and yada, yada. And, uh, you know, we ended up falling asleep in my one room, and uh, he uh, had about, I'd say, sometime in the middle of the night, I just was awake, wide awake. You know, I was like I'd been awake for an hour. Uh, I was totally conscious of what was going on. And uh, my room was pretty dark. You now, it's being in a basement, there's no windows. I had a strange feeling and impression to look up and uh, to look up at the ceiling, and, I, and I, I did. You know, before this, my hair was stamped on my arms, and I just felt really weird. So I looked up, and I saw this woman. And, you know, as an Irish person would probably ex- would describe it as a banshee. Uh, she had flowing black hair. Um, it was almost she was barely lit up, like she had her own light coming from her. It was just enough to make her out, because, again, it's like pitch black room. And she had this flowing black hair with, like, silver streaks in it. Her eyes were just these black holes, and there was no eyes. And she was yelling at me and trying to yell something to me, like like she wanted to kill me. (laughs) And she had this white, kind of grayish, torn dress that was flowing again, like it was just fluttering. And I froze in horror. I mean, it was the most horrific thing I've ever seen in my life. I mean, I've had quite a few ghost experiences. Not anything recently, but this is, especially as a teenager, I had quite a few. When I actually went to travel to Ireland years later, I did have a few as well. Again, nothing I saw was more uh, uh, friends of mine had seen and and also things I had just kind of experienced and I mentioned to people. That's a whole other story. But back to this banshee in in my house, I, I literally was locked on her for about 10 seconds before I just put the sheet over my head and for like an hour I was under the sheet just frozen terror you know sweating my heart was probably through the roof just shocked to death like this thing is right above me and i'm trapped so eventually hours later i you know fell asleep and and uh you know i woke up and didn't think much of it but you know a couple a couple years later and this actually this happened when i was 12 a couple years later though when i was probably about 13 or 14. Uh, again, I, I, you know, that's the only place I had to sleep was in that room. Is I got kind of freaked out by that room after that, and I, I tried to sleep in just the main part of the basement. And I had uh, another friend of mine over and sleep over, same kind of thing. You know, we're just kind of being, you know, kids, being teenagers, yada, yada, yada. Go to bed kind of late. And then a similar experience happened where I was in the other room. I woke up. Again, it's very dark. We did have a few small uh, windows uh, that let a little bit of light in there, but still, it was pretty dark. And uh, I I was not, I was fully awake, but not as awake as the first time. And I again had this impression to look over in a certain direction. It was down by the stairs and it was like, you know, from my room was on the left of the stairs and you could, a little bit of a walkway to the right. And I I looked to the right 
right by my room and I see this woman, the same woman. This time she's just walking. She's walking from the stairs and across that uh, part by my room in the wall. And I just, again, was frozen, freaked out. It wasn't as scary as seeing her in you know, face and she's young, like, I want to kill you. Um, so, uh, you know, again, I, I put my head under the covers, freaked out, you know, just tried to forget about it. And that was it. And again, uh, I didn't really, I had to stay in the room for a couple more years until I moved out. But a lot of things happened in that room where I had, where I felt like something was like a hand was going on my shirt and it was like tickling my back and just weird stuff in that room, really weird stuff. And uh, so just to prove it wasn't a figment of imagination or I wasn't just seeing things, uh, years later when I was with having a family reunion at the house and my family and my parents still live there. Uh, I was talking to my brother and my sister, and we're talking about ghost stories, and we're talking about the house. And I mentioned that one I'm just telling you right now. And my younger brother, who's two years younger than me, when he was 12, he saw that woman in that basement because he would, you know, have his friends over, and they would sit in the basement sometimes, hang out, you know, play video games, whatever. Same experience. Saw the same woman, you know, a couple years later. Uh, or actually, I was probably about the same time when I was 14. Uh, what when he was 12 walking right across that one section so obviously she was probably um you know she's probably she's probably her house down there whatever you know, that's where she lived but we found out the last two that owned the house had moved out unexpectedly we never knew why but that basement was just really creepy i mean the rest of the house was fine but that basement just had Especially when I was even younger than that when we first moved in there we put hide and seek down there and I always got the weirdest you know willies and just Never liked the place. No, just always never felt very comfortable. I never slept very well down there. I was always tired going to work, always tired when I came home. Just always felt drained, you know, being in that basement. And it was always very depressing. I always get very depressed if, if I, you know, was there for any length of period of time. Especially when I traveled. I went to, like I said, I went to Ireland one time when I was just moving out and I ended up coming back there. And again, I just go into this depression and feel drained and just not a very, you know, uplifting, uplifting basement. But I uh, hope you enjoyed that story if you use it, and uh, good luck to you, and uh, and maybe you'll uh, hear my Irish story sometimes, and uh, uh, good luck. Thanks for sharing that story with us. I think the, the lesson in a lot of that is listen to your gut. <laughs> when, when it tells you it's not the right place to be, it's probably not the right place to be. Yeah. Uh, get out of there. That's what you want to do. I, you know, in all my years of of doing ghost stuff and investigating and telling ghost stories and listening to them, I'm not sure I've ever really encountered a story about something that could be considered a banshee. Like from you know in movies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But like in a story, I've never have I ever like heard that. So that's kind of blown my mind a little bit. Well, what makes it a something a banshee? What is the what's the technical you know where you fall to the banshee category? You know, I'm not even sure, but it, you, I know that there's something to do with screaming and being very loud. Mm -hmm. Um. But other than that, I'm not sure. Um, I'm just looking at a banshee is a female spirit in Irish folklore who heralds the death of a family member, usually by screaming, wailing, shrieking, or keening, which I'm not sure what keening is. Interesting. I wonder if you can, like, when you're dead and you get to be a ghost, if you can choose banshee as a category. Like, I don't be a banshee. Be a would, you want, would you want to be a banshee? No, I don't, like, I don't like screaming. I don't like it. But I could see some people that would really get into that. Yeah. Uh, Mom, I love you, but she would have been a good one. It's like, you're point. a banshee now. Okay, I see how that works. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, I guess, you know, to each their own. Uh, hey, if uh, you like the podcast and you want access to all of our episodes and everything ad free, check us out on Apple Podcasts and our premium channel there or through patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Until next time, for Todd, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to another edition of Real Ghost Stories Online.